In today's gospel, we see an extraordinary form of malice. For in the old translation, the word amazement is more related to the word epiphania, that is, the Greek word which indicates a manifestation of the divine. And so, in the very teaching of the Lord in the synagogue, the people saw a manifestation of the divine. That is why they were so amazed. And what was it that caused them to disregard that which they were amazed at. It was because the Lord was not high-born. They say very clearly in disparaging what he did, was he not the cop and his son? And so they show that they disrespected him because when he came, he truly came as a humble servant and would work the ordinary human trades. And so because they were looking for someone high-born, someone who would bring about an, a culture that was essentially a culture that they wanted rooted in the same vices that the Romans were practicing, that is, a culture much like our own, our own rooted in entertainment. They could not stand a man who earned his living through the work of his hands. And so they showed themselves to be a thoroughly a disreputable culture because they were more interested in being entertained than in anything else. But in choosing the trade of the carpenter, the Lord shows us more than we realize, for it is a perfect, for it is a perfect occupation for the Son of God because it reflects that God the Father is the creator of all things. And so it is a perfect commentary on the first article of the creed. And so it is that it reflects that the Lord has created all things for us because he loves us. And yet they would not exercise that virtue of stewardship over the created order. And so they would disparage any human labor and particularly him who came to show us how to exercise all human commerce and so to do so in a just and honest way. And so they could not stand the Lord simply because he came as a simple servant, a simple, uh, the son of a carpenter who would exercise the trade of St. Joseph, but because their lives were a life that was dedicated to, uh, to a form of entertainment much like our own, they could not stand to settle down and do that penance for which, human la for which was added to human labor, the, the, the toil that was spoken of way back by Moses of old because they could not, they could not as it were, settle down and simply work, their, work out their salvation in fear and trembling in this life. And so the Lord could not work any miracles in there precisely because this is connected to their lack of faith. For when we put our hope of salvation in the entertainments of the world, then the Lord cannot work because we have no faith in him. Rather, we have faith in Satan. For the early doctors and fathers of the church, especially those like St. Peter Chrysologus, whom we celebrate today, would point out very clearly that the entertainment culture was considered by them a mask for Satan. That is why they so thoroughly condemned it for they saw behind all the entertainments of the culture of their time, the, the devil masking himself in order to lead people astray. And so ultimately their faith was not in Christ or the Messiah to come, but truly whether they knew it or not, they had put their faith in Satan in his way. And so they had isolated themselves from almighty God. And so God had come in order to show them the way back. <coughs> but because they saw very clearly that the way back was the way of the ordinary life and all the monotony that comes with it, they would have nothing to do it, for they wanted variety and spice in their life, and that is always a sign of satanic manipulation. And so let us pray this day that we enter into the mystery of Christ's incarnation and all that he did, 
for he came to show us how to sanctify every human activity, every human endeavor, and every human institution. But as, as God, he does not force us, for he never deprives us of our free will, but always leaves us free to choose either the royal way that he showed by every aspect of the life he lived as a man, um, or we can choose the royal road that is wide because it is full of all the entertainments, whether it is the entertainments of the ancient world or the modern world, and always and everywhere they have, it has only one purpose, to lead us to the precipice of hell, and then, dying of despair, we lose all hope and are condemned for all eternity. The royal road of penance and prayer is the road that the Lord chose when he became man, and so it is the road that we must choose, and we must choose it with complete confidence that it leads to the glory, the glory of heaven and the beatific vision of God for all eternity there.